Does Dolly Jacobs really need to be introduced to this audience in Sarasota? No. Probably not. Um, this, is the, this is the city in which she was born. Uh, people like to say born a princess into a family of circus royalty and quite fittingly went on to become uh, the queen of the air. She is one of a very few circus artists to have been twice invited to participate at the International Circus Festival of Monte Carlo and to have been awarded both the Grand, or no, the Dame du Cirque and the coveted Silver Crown. Um, back home, uh, we all get to know her with both feet on the ground um, as she so generously gives back to this community and to her art form. Uh, through the incredible work that she does with Circus, Sar Circus Sarasota and now the newly dubbed Circus Arts Conservatory. So today we're going to talk about all of those things with our guest, Dolly Jacobs. Thank you. Um, a reoccurring theme with a lot of our guests um, is, and this has been written about you, that unlike most of us in the audience uh, who would have had to have run away from home to join the circus, um, you didn't have to. Circus was your home. Uh, and since uh, I think you've been frequently asked to share those memories, particularly of, of your father, because that's where we would like to start, um, I want to put a kind of a twist on that question and ask you instead of sharing your memories, how do you want the world to remember your father? That's, you know, that's very difficult to put in, in concise and probably in one word or one phrase because um, I want him to be remembered um, not only as a great clown, inventive clown, uh, not only as um, uh, a producing clown, but one that dedicated his life to the circus, um, to, uh, that gave his life to the, the art form that we call circus. And, uh, um, I think more than anything that he was a good person and a wonderful father and wonderful husband. And um, so, you know, there's, it's so en encompassing of what all that he did and what he stood for and how he uh, created um, this character that uh, was with Ringling for over 60 years. 60 years. There's a, news, um, a magazine article, Newsweek article, that, I, um, that Debbie Walk uh, supplied me from our archives that focused on you and it um, there's wonderful quotes from your father uh, watching as 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 these uh, magazine people are interviewing you and um, but in there he 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 said that he had taught you uh, some of the, the the contortionist moves you know we don't get anywhere in life by ourselves you know and I think our parents are are the most influential of how we become as an adult. And I feel very fortunate to have had the parents that I have, and my, my father did influence me. A lot of it was, as a young child, as soon as we were able to walk, we were doing back bends and splits and handstands <laughs> and hanging on whatever we could. Um, but also visually, by watching him on the sidelines, watching him perform, even though I didn't wear clown shoes, I watched him how he performed, how his presence to the audience, um, how he was able, with a small gesture, be able to get a point across to the people. And that is the art of pantomime. And you can take that into any field in the circus to be able to get a point across. And I think besides the uh, physical, the, the back bends, in which he did teach my sister and I at a young age, I think the uh, his expression in the ring and uh, setting an example of um, being able to work Madison Square Garden and with a small gesture to be able to uh, have that person that's sitting in the very top row understand the point he's trying to get across. And he always said, you know, keep it simple, you know, not too much spaghetti, <laughs> you know. <laughs> they told that to all the clowns too. Um, you keep it simple and, and then your point is more clear and precise. And I believe in, in my art form of being an aerialist, um, I, I also get a point across to the people that it's like, come fly with me, come enjoy what I'm doing. And, and it's through the connection with the people um, 
that you do that. It's not just going out there and performing a trick to say you performed it. It's being able to connect emotionally with the people and let them think that it's very easy, which it's not. But that's, <laughs> that's your goal, is to make it look easy and to uh, take them with you. I'm going off script a little bit here, Dolly, because that's, uh, I love hearing that because I do not know how many times I've seen you at that point of takeoff. Dolly has um, graced this stage for I don't know how many performances now during the summer circus. We will do as many as 60 performances and it's always about right over there where that, that first moment you, you lift off, it's yeah, everybody goes right up there with you. Um, how many years uh, did you, were you with your father together in the circus? How many? Uh, performing with my father on Ringling Brothers, 14 years. 14 years. Yeah, I joined in 1971 and uh, was there through 84. Okay. Yeah. Um, your mother was also in the circus, but you never saw her perform, right? That's correct. Right. Uh, my mother was a model from New York. She was uh, uh, on the cover of Pageant magazine. I don't know if any of you remember that magazine pageant. Uh, she was Miss Prell, Miss Breck, Fabergé. She had beautiful, court, short, curly, natural curly hair, so did a lot of hair commercials. Um, so she was uh, one of the top 10 models in New York in her day. Uh, on a whim, came down to Sarasota to the uh, winter quarters here, to, decided to join the ballet group, uh, the corps de troupes of, of the showgirls, if you will. And um, so she wasn't really a circus performer, but in those days uh, they had a lot of girls. My godmother also came down from New York. She was a ballet dancer and uh, joined the showgirl, the troops, and she went up and they had Barbette at that year, uh, I believe it was 47, 48, had all the girls going up in the air in uh, one of the production numbers. And um, they rehearsed here in Sarasota for a couple of months and then went directly to the old Madison Square Garden. And that's where um, they would perform for a couple months there. And during, I think, the second month of the run, my mother was on a revolving ladder, so she would balance with another girl on the way uh, up for my mother to get to the top. The other girl was at the bottom as a co uh, counterbalance. And um, unfortunately, uh, one show, the girl at the bottom, without thinking, got off as my mother was on her way to the top. So my mother came down about 50 feet and broke her back, crushed five vertebrae, was carried across the street to a polyclinic. Um, and that's where, from what I understand, because I wasn't born yet, yeah. uh, my father went up to visit her. And that's where the romance started. So that's, that's, that's the story I heard. No resistance from her when you said you wanted to do the same thing? You know, if there was some apprehension, she didn't show it. Uh, she, my mother never uh, pushed my sister and I in any different direction. She let us choose. Um, that was really wonderful about uh, growing up here in Sarasota because at the time, growing up and being in the school system here, also being part of Sailor Circus, in the summers, uh, a part of the uh, Sarasota swim team, Red Cross, uh, diving, life-saving. So we grew up. Um, on simple means. My father had the fame, but not the fortune. So we had no air conditioning. <laughs> and so our summers, we would spend from seven o'clock in the morning till evening at, at the beach. At the beach. Yes, doing and learning. And, and then during school days, we were part of Sailor Circus, gymnastics, the YMCA. So my mother kept us going uh, and in different uh, venues that involved competition. And, and areas that we could strive to, to be good, at, actually to be the best at, that we could at whatever we were doing. So we were never really pushed into the circus. It was, it was holding us back with the reins to the time that we could. Um, but she didn't? I think she stood on the sidelines and I'm sure she was uh, apprehensive. She never uh, wow. verbalized it. I'm sure my father also. Um, there was, after, it was probably about I started my ring act in 1976, and a couple, two or three years later, I started this uh, to, to become solo status. I created a, brought back a trick that was 
done 40 years prior, which hadn't been done for 40 years. And the four people that had done it either were injured or hurt or <laughs> maimed. So it was a little bit difficult <laughs> for me to convince uh, the people that be to help me uh, rig this trick, which was a full flyaway somersault completely releasing from the rings at full swing to a rope without a net or a safety. And um, it was done by Willing Winnie Colino. Um, it was done by um, Frank Shepard, which is the one that had the accident, I believe. Some of them used a net, some of them um, didn't. Um, some of them did it from a trapeze, I did it from the rings. So I had nobody really to talk to that had actually done it. So it was a lot of trial and error. Um, there was one gentleman on the show uh, that uh, Wally Naughton, who did a bear act, who had seen it done. So he was the one, and this is what I always try to emphasize, uh, is encouragement, because um, he encouraged me. There was, th there was so many people that discouraged me, saying, don't do it, Dolly, you're gonna kill yourself, it's too dangerous. But Wally said, you know what, Dolly, you can do it. I know you can do it. And that's all it took. Wow. It was, that's all it took, and um, I practiced and practiced, and I got whiplashes, you know, because it was trial and error, I had to f work it out. Yeah. And um, find the distance. And I did, it was the only trick that I rehearsed with a safety belt. The rest of the act I learned about five feet off the ground, went up another five feet. So I never used a safety belt when I was learning my act. You mentioned your sister earlier. She also circus performer? Yes, my sister was a circus performer before I went professional. She went professional. Uh, did a beautiful, beautiful uh, single trapeze act. Um, she's very gorgeous, and she would walk into the ring and have the people in the palm of their, her, her, their hands. You know, as soon as she walked in, she really didn't have to do anything. She was just so voluptuous, but she did an incredible act. She did some tricks that Albert Powell did years ago uh, that brought back that, you know, and it's wonderful to be able to uh, bring back tricks, you know, that haven't been done for many years. And then this summer, we had a third generation here on stage. Yes. Your niece? My sister's daughter, Julia. Is she going to enter the? Oh, she's, uh, she, her heart of hearts is, she's dying too. Yeah, and I, I believe she will. She's finishing up her college now, so as soon as that's done, I'm sure she'll enter into it. Uh, you mentioned um, a bit about growing up in, in Sarasota uh, as your hometown. Um, one of the things that I, I've noted sort of on, on the periphery, uh, Dolly, is um, there are a lot of people here you've known forever. Um, that, I mean, it's more than your immediate family. The circus community in Sarasota is, is a large extended family, and you had mentioned uh, your, your godmother earlier. Do you yes. want to share some memories oh, I'd, there? I'd love to, I'd love to. Um, never miss an opportunity. Like I said before, you never get anywhere in life by yourself. It's people along the way that help you, and, and to the day I die, I'm going to recognize those people that help me because uh, it's not a solo routine. People plant seeds, and even people that don't even realize they're planting a seed. Uh, but my godmother, um, uh, she's incredible, Margie Geiger. She's one, her husband was one of the original Walendas, Joseph Geiger. Wasn't a Walenda by family, but was with the original four that came over. Um, Joe was 23 years older than Margie, and my father was 20 years older than my mother. So, and they, Margie and my mother were both New Yorkers, and Joe and my father were both from Germany. So there's a connection right there. Um, both uh, Joe and Margie, wonderful, wonderful people. And from the time I can remember, they've, they were in our lives. And Margie, um, you know, some people are born teachers, and some people are born students. And Margie is a born teacher. And I always felt that I'm a born student. Uh, I teach now at Sailor Circus and I just, uh, I don't have that, but I can, luckily I can still demonstrate. <laughs> I can show you how to do it. I can tell you how to do it. But um, she took, you know, her, she did the Roman rings that uh, Joe taught her, the Roman ring act that she passed on to me we practiced twice a day in our backyard. We had an A-frame back there, uh, nine o'clock in the morning and four o'clock in the evening, two to three hours each ses oh. session. And you know, in climate, 
outside. Uh, <laughs> but I was there, warmed up and ready when she arrived. Um, also, one of the things that my mother and father instilled is to respect your elders and have manners. So when she arrived, I was very grateful for her time and of passing the torch. You know, she was passing the torch to me. And how wonderful is that? Um, without asking anything in return. So I'm getting choked up because <laughs> it is, it's a wonderful gift. You know, gifts that you purchase from the store are one thing. That type of gift is priceless because it lasts for your lifetime. So my goal is to be able to, at this point now, to be able to do the same as she is well, to pass it. Well, and Sailor Circus, you were involved with when you were that age? I was involved at a young age, yeah. Uh -huh in elementary school um, for about four years. And what an institution, what, uh, what an incredible institution, the Sailor Circus. And now full circle to be running it, it's just, it's really incredible. You know, I never really left Sailor Circus because, well, I left for the time that I was traveling with Ringling, but I always would come home and would practice there. So it, it's, it's like my mom, she can't get rid of me. <laughs> When I was preparing my notes, I thought, you know, born a princess, named a queen, and now as your sphere of influence increases, I, I, I think we need to work empress in there somewhere. <laughs> you know, it's, um, um, as long as I don't come out in a wheelchair, it's okay. <laughs> uh, the story of your career, uh, I think, could be, could be a TV um, movie. It's, it's, it's got all the romance and... Uh, and a glamour of, 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 of a wonderful romantic fairy tale. Um, and since here again, you've been asked so many times to recall and share those glamorous moments. I'm hoping as we talk about uh, the career itself, you might share a few of those not so glamorous moments, because th there had to be some. Sure, life is full of unglamorous moments, <laughs> don't we know? <laughs> um, uh, and I was thinking about that, you know, you had told me a few of the questions before and I was thinking about that and you know there's funny ones that I can tell you about going out as a beautiful empress and having a hanger in my in my headpiece that I knew nothing about <laughs> or you know or having the headpiece fall off into your hand but those kinds of things they're funny and, and they're humorous um, but I think the challenges of traveling with the circus whether it be being away from home whether it be uh, living in a confined uh, area on a train or in a, a motor home, mobile home. Um, all of those things are challenges, but you grow from them. Um, I, and when I did interviews on Ringling, uh, they would always try to find out what's so bad, what's wrong. They were looking for the hard stuff. And, and I would say, well, you know what the, the worst thing is, is not getting my mail on time you know, to pay my bills. Because everything else um, in life with the challenges you learn from and you grow from. And that's how I take it. Living in a very confined area, uh, the first year on Ringling, um, being a showgirl, uh, being on the top bunk, no air conditioning in the train going through Arizona. We had a box at the end of our bed. It was called a crumb box where you would keep your stuff in. And my candle melted, it was so hot. <laughs> And you were, you were still in your early teens when you started, yep, right? Yep, I was 14 when I started traveling. So, and that in itself was an experience because, uh, you know, you're, you're just out of school. I just had a public school. But I always try to say I had the best of both worlds and everything in my life, um, bless, I'm really blessed because it happened at the right time. Uh, at 14, when I left uh, junior high, um, I wasn't really enjoying it. I loved school, but I wasn't enjoying the interaction. Um, was uh, too shy to raise my hand and ask questions. Um, so there I go on to Ringling, and now you're on a, an, a, this huge company with people from all over the world. And um, I think the scariest part was the rehearsals because uh, Richard Barstow was the uh, choreographer and he was quite open on the microphone and, and I was so shy, you know, and at times he would put the microphone in your face and ask you what you did wrong. <laughs> and I, and I, Everything. But once we got on the road, um, you're in a dressing room with women from all over the world, 
from Bulgaria, from Hungary, from Czechoslovakia, from Poland, from Germany, from Spain. And uh, they were all your mothers. Even though my mother was there, they protected you. As soon as D Dolly walked, they said, well, be careful, watch your language. You know, Dolly's, you know, and there were other kids on the show, not a whole lot my age. Um, so I matured quick. Um, but I had a tutor. I finished my schooling with homeschooling. I had one of the girl clowns uh, who was a college graduate and uh, majored in um, education. And so she, even though I had my correspondence, she tutored me. And I learned so much. We went from 9 o'clock in the morning till whatever time the show was. And we did schooling in my stateroom in the morning. And by the way, I have a 65-year-old yellow-headed Amazon parrot, Corky, that's still alive that uh, was in the train room with me and wanted to get in on my schooling. <laughs> and so I ha we had to whisper because Corky, whenever you're talking, whether it be on the phone or to somebody, start talking too. And so we had, I had to teach him to whisper. <laughs> but, but, the, but the interesting part about growing up at that young age, um, so valuable. You know, I, I, I feel that uh, the, the life lessons that I learned at that point on Ringling, um, uh, it's just hard to measure. I speak fluent Bulgarian. I can read and write in, in Bulgarian. I speak a little Polish. I speak Spanish. Um, and a lot of the circus kids are, do have m multiple languages. Um, besides the language itself, um, it, it amazes me because I ha speak these languages fluently and yet I have a hard time remembering somebody's name. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what was really incredible is that um, the world becomes smaller. And you know, you realize that uh, you know, even though you're, uh, you know, these women from Bulgaria, they couldn't speak English. So I learned their language. And the next thing you know, you know they came at, back in the 70s. You know, they didn't have washing machines and uh, all the luxuries that we have here in America. And so I learned to, to sew, I learned to crochet, I learned to uh, make costumes, I learned to cook with what it, whatever I had. I, I learned a lot of life, life lessons and I learned to appreciate uh, everything that we have. And uh, I look back on those lessons just like you were asking, you know, the challenges of, of being in the circus, the challenges of traveling, um, and I take them as, lessons in life and grow from them. There's an account that I read again in, in, in reading about your life uh, where they talk about uh, in this article um, when you first showed your act, when you, I see it as a great movie moment and it may have been different, but um, uh, that moment where you decided to show Mr. Feld your act. Can you share that with oh, us? Love to. Um, 1976, so I stayed, I finished my schooling end of 75, stayed home. I told uh, the Felds that I wanted to create an act. Um, Margie Geiger helped me uh, day in and day out to put, at first I was gonna do single trapeze because I didn't know what. I wanted to do something different, again, following my father's footsteps to, to make your own path. Um, and she brought out her rings and I had never really seen anybody do swinging rings before. Uh, she brought out her rings, and I was like, I'd only seen Vicki Yunus, who was an incredible aerialist, very strong, and I didn't think that I could start with that act to make it to live up to her, and I really didn't want to follow in, you know, her, I, she made her path, and I shouldn't be on her path. And so when Margie explained to me the, the swinging rings, and I tried it, um, I fell in love with it instantly because of the freedom of the rings themselves. Uh, it wasn't solid uh, trapeze. So um, put the act together and um, made an appointment to come back in April, which is just a few months after we practiced, but it, we really put in you know, double amount of time when people asked how long did it take you. We really put in a lot of time and uh, effort into that short amount of time. So we were meant to meet the Felds in uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, in April, and Margie came up with me. And um, at that time, the Felds were in New York. There was an issue with the union or something. They still had union. So we had waited, and we waited for the audition and waited. And finally, Margie had to go back home. 
and the Felds came and uh, I auditioned and granted five years prior I've been on the show growing up and all these people that are on the show know me uh, were dear friends and so they were all in the audience for the audition my father swung me that was incredible to have your father you know swing you and um, I auditioned, got a standing ovation, obviously. It was, it was a movie moment for me. <clears throat> Antoinette Kinsella was there, and uh, all these people. Vicki Yunus was there, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, I worked that night. They put me in the show that night. Um, it was a display. I didn't have my somersault yet, so I would do the one knee spin. And there was already a display with three acts, so I was the fourth act going into this display. But I. Made twenty-five dollars more than the showgirls, <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't matter. I was just thrilled to be working, and I worked my way up the ladder from there. Wow! Yeah. Every once in a while, things pop into my head that I think are kind of odd questions, but maybe they. Um, I again, in, in the reading that I did, it uh, someone refers to a, a, an eight-minute act. What do circus performers do for the other? two or so hours that the rest of the circus is going on? Do you just come in for your act and then leave? That's, or do a, you... that's a very good question from somebody that doesn't, that know, doesn't know backstage. <laughs> so, you know, it, it is an eight minute act, but it's almost a 24 hour preparation, you know, because you have to watch what you eat, you have to watch how you sleep, you don't drink, you don't, you know, you don't get, that's why most circus people, you know, they're, you don't see that drugs and, and alcohol involved. Um, so f it, um, when I was on Ringling, it was a three hour show. And so you're there an hour before to prepare your makeup and all. And then there's usually an opening number. And then there would be uh, a spectacle, depending on where your act fell in. Um, if your act was after the opening, you straight after the opening, you would start preparing your costume, your hair, I had a, a fetish about making sure my hands were clean and washed with Baraxo before I worked so that there's no grease because that's all you're hanging on by are your hands. Uh, you just touch your face and you have natural oil in your face so my hands sweat a lot and uh, so that was something very important to have my hands clean. Uh, the preparation and then the warm up. You know the warm up a lot of the buildings are cold and depending on the temperature uh, you need to warm up more if it's winter, if it's cold, if it's warmer, maybe not as much. Kind of, I kind of associate muscles like clay, you know, the, when it's warm, they're a little bit soft, when it's cold, they're hard. And the, and the same way you have to warm them up by, by exercising, stretching your back, your arms, your shoulder, your splits, everything that inv you involves in your act. So, and then you do your eight minute act. And then you come back and you to get rid of everything that you prepared and you prepare for your next number, which could be the spectacle where everybody's involved in or uh, the finale. So it, it really is uh, on Ringling, it was, was quite involved. Working other shows, uh, perhaps they don't have the opening and, and the uh, spectacle number, so mm -hmm. it's not as much time consuming, but still the preparation is the same. The same. Well, we're gonna move from the glamor to the romance and um, when did you meet the dashing Pedro Reyes? <laughs> now, this is a book, too. <laughs> you know, I'm tempted to say, just because I know him well, it's interesting how um, women in the circus find men that are, apparently are 20 years older. Yes, <laughs> he, yeah, but he isn't 20 years older. Oh, I thought maybe he was, too. Okay. Although I look 20 <laughs> years younger. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wish. <laughs> I was on the Ringling Red Unit with Gunther, my father, um, and Pedro came over with the troupe to the Blue Unit. So the Red Unit had Gunther, the Blue Unit was Charlie Bauman, and um, I always said the Red Unit was the better, better of the two. He, we always argue about that. But he, he came over with an incredible aerial act, and I guess, you know, being an aerialist, you, um, you admire somebody in your own field, uh, their daredevil the daring young man on the flying trapeze, yeah. and he was handsome to boot. <laughs> but uh, we met, and um, 
shook hands and uh, congratulated each other on, on our uh, performances. And uh, then we met again, believe it or not, in Sailor Circus practicing. And I think that's where the romance started. So I'll tell you a little bit about the romance. So being a feature, feature aerialist and Pedro being a featured aerialist, he went to do on to do a solo act. Um, usually end up on a circus that has only one featured aerialist. So for many years, we had a long distance romance and that was before cell phones. So we were in pay phones with coins, uh, truck stops and traveling and trying to get a hold of each other. A lot of uh, airplane tickets to visit. Um, so we finally decided to, um, to be able to work together is to put an act together. And we created On Wings of Love. And uh, we hired uh, um, Guy Caron, who was one of the original artistic directors for Cirque du Soleil. Uh, we did a video asking him to come and help us, and he came down to Sailor Circus and uh, created this love story, which you know there hadn't been done before with a man and woman creating a love story. Uh, we worked to a beautiful piece of music, um, a violin concerto, Thais Meditations. Beautiful. And uh, did it very classically. Uh, we then had a choreographer come down from Ottawa that uh, Guy had uh, recommended. Uh, he gave us a lot of ballet, which neither Pedro nor I had a lot of experience on the ground with that. But he had, um, he had the right um, idea because what he did, it gave us a lot. And then when it came time for us to perform, we were able to be, have a lot to choose from that what we felt comfortable with. So we didn't do all the jetés and pirouettes that he had put in there. Um, so uh, we created this act and uh, started at Bush Gardens and uh, worked there for several months. Um, and, uh, and then went from there to, uh, to Montreal, uh, La Ronde, a park, and from there went to Japan with the Canadian troupe and made it a little bit different with a, a more of a dynamic feel because it had more of a Cirque du Soleil feel to that show. Uh, they had fire around the ring curb and I would come in first and then Pedro would follow and it was a lot more flat footed, not so balletic. Um, so we had two versions of the act and through that year, year and a half, we were able to incorporate more tricks and um, finally went to Germany with it. Uh, and uh, it, was, it was incredible because um, had we had microphones on, it probably would have been a comedy act <laughs> because it's meant to be a love story and we're up there telling each other what to do because we're so independent and so strong, feel so strongly about being right. Of course I was right. <laughs> and he thought he was right. So had we had microphones on, uh, there was one time in the act that we would go around and uh, I would, we would actually kiss, and I was so mad at him, I bit his lip. <laughs> <laughs> I had nothing else to do. I had nothing, I couldn't let go, so. But uh, to, just to let, to finish the story about the romance, um, we, uh, I stayed home in 1990 to take care of my dad. He was already getting up there and needed some help at home, and I financially felt stable and I needed to have that quality time with my dad. And um, so I stayed home and to pass the time, I took up uh, uh, cosmetology just because I had so much experience in hair and, and such. Um, so I got my cosmetology license at the same time and kept the communication with Pedro. He was on Big Apple Circus at the time. And uh, so 4th of July was a holiday. So I flew up to visit Pedro on 4th of July and spend a few days with him. And he popped the question with the fireworks. <laughs> Fourth of July, 1990. Uh, unfortunately, two days later, uh, he, during his aerial act, somebody else was preparing his rigging, uh, forgot to hook up one of the shackles. So two days after he proposed, um, when he did his final jump, which was an incredible long jump midair, he would grab the rope and it would, the string would break and the bungee was meant to take over. The guy forgot to hook up the bungee. So he went down onto his feet and uh, his ankles pretty much exploded. 
So that put the uh, wedding on hold for 17 years. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I have a, we actually got on the cover of Sarasota Magazine, and, and when I do other speeches, I say, if you can wait 17 years to get married, you too can be on the cover of Sarasota Magazine. <laughs> but you <laughs> but got we, married here. We got married, uh, you know, this to me is sacred ground. The Ringling Museum is sacred ground ever since I was a child. Uh, I had my first performance here on this grounds, you know. I don't know if you know that. No. Uh, I don't know what uh, event they were having, but I was four years old. And uh, it was outdoor, and apparently they incorporated professional performers, and I think they had some Sailor Circus performers, and it was some type of event. All, I have pictures. So my father put his makeup on my sister and I, and he, because normally he has midgets, right? <laughs> <laughs> I remember I had my red polka dot pajamas, and a couple of the gags, and, and wonderful, wonderful pictures. Thank God my mother took pictures. Um, one of my father's gags was, you know how they have the cow with the midget or the person in the back and the person in the front? Yeah. We well, had a dachshund, okay? <laughs> and he was, he was like Mae West walking the dachshund. And normally it's midgets. Well, it turned out to be my sister in the front and I was in the back, okay? <laughs> so halfway around the track, I tripped and fell and started crying and ran the other way. <laughs> so the back end of the dachshund went running and that was my end of clowning. <laughs> um, <laughs> at this time, if you, ha if you have some questions, I think Maureen uh, will start gathering those up. Um, but I do want to, uh, uh, I think at this point, turn to um, the work that you're now doing, that you and Pedro are doing here in Sarasota. Uh, and you're giving so much back uh, to this community and to the world of circus um, through the work that you do. Um, tell us a little bit, if you can, um, or maybe if you had to zero in on the one singular most rewarding aspect of what you're doing now, besides performing, what would it be? And I thought about that too, you know, because there's so many rewarding aspects of what we do. And I guess in my heart of hearts, I'd have to say legacy. You know, we do performance, we do training, we do outreach, and we do legacy. We do all of that. And I guess because of my heritage and because of the incredible performers that live here in Sarasota that, um, that made the greatest show on earth, uh, those performers that paved the way for the rest of us, uh, I'd have to say legacy. Um, it's just, uh, you know, like I said, it's passing of the torch. And so uh, my deepest passion is to, and Pedro also, to lift the image of circus up on par to the other arts. Uh, in, in the tenderest part of my heart, I believe that the circus is one of the noblest of art forms. I really do. Do you see a next generation of great circus stars coming out of Sarasota? We do. I mean, I came out of it. <laughs> but we have, you know, uh, gosh, over 100 kids in the Sailor Circus. And I'm, uh, I have four girls that I'm teaching. And I'd never stop to have kids myself. So I got a, over 100 of them now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> <laughs> what but would you say the greatest obstacle you're facing right now with? Money. Money? <laughs> Uh, you know, because there's so much you can do when you have funding. You know, there's so many. Uh, we want to make Sarasota the mecca of circus. You know, this is, would be the destination for, like I said, the training, you know, the outreach. And, and for, you know, you know, from the very beginning when Pedro and I started, we started as the National Circus School of Performing Arts, which was quite a mouthful. And it was very similar to Ecole Nationale du Cirque in Canada. So we narrowed it down to Circus Sarasota. But in the very beginning, um, because of Pedro's reputation and mine, um, we were getting calls from performers all over the world, uh, knowing that Sarasota is the hub of incredible circus performers, knowing that we were originally trying to start a school, um, but it was like putting the cart before the horse. 
So we started with what we do and what we know and what can bring in money is that's a circus. Um, they were wanting to come here and to train with us and we still to this day. So um, we have great plans. Uh, we have 2.2 acres where we are right now and we can't build out, but we're gonna build up. So we have a lot of great uh, dreams of, um, we need to get air conditioned, we need to get uh, new flooring and seating, and it's all a matter of time, and it's all growth, and it's all a wonderful part of being a non-for-profit is that when we're not here anymore, it'll continue. Yeah. And that's so important, I think, for Sarasota. Sarasota's got a lot to be proud of, a lot. The Ringland Museum, right on top there, you know, and uh, uh, the Lido Beach, the beaches here are gorgeous, the ballet, the opera, the symphony, and the circus. Um, I'm going to do a little, a little bit of pitching for uh, oh. Circus Sarasota as, uh, as the questions are being gathered, because right now, and this is quite, it's a bit of a departure from what we've come to think of from Circus Sarasota, but um, I have to find the name of it here, Vague de Cirque, from Montreal, right? Mm -hmm. Um, if you haven't had a chance, you might want to go do that down at Sarasota Square Mall. It's a wonderful little um, spiegel tent kind of setting. It's 200 and it's uh, very intimate and not your typical circus. I guarantee you'll laugh and be amazed. Yeah, it was, we went uh, very intimate. last Friday night. It was yeah. great, great fun. And then, um, of course, Circus Sarasota later uh, this winter and before that, um, Extreme Vegas. So anyway, pick some of this up. We're not yes, really uh, collecting there's... recollections is it also about pitching, but we're going to do that because um, this very much speaks to that uh, commitment you. to legacy and, and keeping uh, that art form um, in front of us. Uh, Maureen, are we, do we have questions? Yes. <laughs> Thanks. I guess I, okay. And these are the questions from the audience. Is Dolly your given name? It is, and it's the name of my father's old girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> but my mother was okay with it, and because they were dear friends. <laughs> um, this is a nice question. It says my middle name, by the way, sorry, is Jean after my mom. <laughs> and your sister's name is Luann. Luann after my dad. Uh, here's a question. It says, both you and Nick Walinda have an attitude of great humility. Is this a characteristic of all circus folk? <laughs> great would, humility and tact. <laughs> I would hope so. I would hope so. I, you know, I, I think um, we're all products. We're not, we don't have, we don't choose our parents. And I was very fortunate with the parents that I was given born into and uh, they gave me the foundation to build my character and uh, and I give credit to them for my humility and uh, this will be a good question to close on what does the future hold for the circus the circus is one of the oldest forms of family entertainment and I think it will be going on forever maybe uh, with the new technology you know it'll be a little bit uh, advanced. I think the traditional circus will never die. So uh, I'm really proud to be part of it and to have um, given my life to be able to continue working to preserve this wonderful, wonderful form, um, the circus of art. And I, I just, uh, I guess my goal in life and always has been is to raise the image to, to uh, separate it from the carnival and the sideshow um, because it is, you know, people risk their lives and they dedicate their lives, the, you know, to this art form. And I think it's something to be very proud of. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.